Good morning, good morning, Symmetry Nation. Happy August uh, and, and good afternoon. We're on the East Coast too, so good morning, good afternoon, Symmetry Nation. Uh, so excited uh, to spend this next half an hour uh, with all of you for our Monday National Sales Webinar. Uh, we gather together as a company every Monday at 12 Eastern uh, to kick off the week, uh, and in this case, a new month. Uh, to get revved up as we get a new week of serving families underway. Uh, my name is Brandy Kimbrell, and I'm an agency director out of Tampa, Florida. Um, I'm grateful for a lot of things, and I'd like to share some of my gratitude uh, with you all today to get the call kicked off. Uh, I am direct to one of the biggest impact players here at Symmetry Financial Group. Uh, he's an amazing friend, a business partner, uh, and a mentor of mine, um, not just in business, but in life. Uh, Mr. Jimmy Spieldenner, uh, super grateful for you, sir. Uh, and we're part of the Delaney Pritchett hierarchy. I feel very fortunate to follow this particular group of gentlemen and everyone they've picked up along the way uh, on this incredible journey here at Symmetry. Uh, Jimmy forever changed my family's life back in 2014. Uh, he introduced me to Symmetry Financial Group and you know he, he busted loose of the restaurant business because he wanted something different. Um, and if he wanted something different, he knew that he was gonna have to do something different. So when he figured, his, when he figured it out, uh, he called me uh, to rescue me from a life of long hours, minimal pay, uh, and to be honest, minimal personal life um, that the restaurant business offers. Uh, I had no idea what I was getting into, um, but with Jimmy by my side, I knew that we could do some pretty incredible things together. Uh, I have three young kids at home. They're a little older now, but I had three young kids at the time. Uh, so it was super scary uh, to walk away from the security that my restaurant career provided. Uh, thanks to Jimmy and the team here at Symmetry, I learned very quickly uh, that the security I felt in my restaurant career was really just an illusion. Um, why were my bosses working a fraction of the time, driving Hummers and Infinities, and I was working 60 to 70 hours a week, sporting a Dodge Neon, right? Um, my whole perspective really changed uh, when I was introduced to this system and this company. Um, it was time for me to put my life in my own hands and create the type of security that I wanted for my family, where I was in control, right? It was my time to push all of my proverbial chips in the center of the table and bet on me for once, all in right? So it was my first conference that I realized that this wasn't just a career change. Uh, this was something much bigger. Uh, if it wasn't for the sacrifice of getting to my first conference and hearing from so many amazing leaders, uh, I can honestly say that I probably would have stayed scared. I made a big decision to stop focusing on scary and start focusing on the possibility of what could be. Forever grateful to you, Jimmy for not putting up with my excuses when I was trying to get out of going to my first conference, because I had plenty of them uh, for putting up with me even before Symmetry and offering me the opportunity to be your lifelong business partner. So much love for you, sir. Of course, if it weren't for the vision, creativity, and expertise of our founders, Casey Watkins, Brandon Allison, and Brian Pope, who knows where we would all be. This tremendous trio made a decision in 2009 to partner up with some um, to partner up and make some serious waves in an industry that's been around for a few hundred years. Um, and that's quite the undertaking. Uh, super grateful for everything they've done to create a company where we're encouraged to work on all ourselves first uh, so we can be the best version of ourselves, not just for our clients, uh, but for our families and communities across the country. Uh, I also want to take a minute um, on this national stage to thank uh, Brian Delaney and Edward Pritchett, um, along with the entire sales and executive team. Uh, in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, I just attended the grand opening of their newly renovated training facility uh, alongside 40 or 50 others, and it was amazing. Um, it was the first time that we had all gotten together in a really long time, and everyone worked really hard to get that facility ready uh, to be able to gather, get together. Um, it was chock full of core values and cornerstones, and I'm not gonna name any names because we know how that goes, but thank you to all of you who showed up and poured in. Uh, it was really the perfect way to springboard us into our upcoming altitude conferences. Um, we're having ours in Memphis here real soon, and I hope everyone is registered for theirs as well. Uh, the gratitude continues and try, as I introduce the two gentlemen uh, that I have the pleasure of hosting the call with today. Uh, we are all in this field inner base shop, and I've had the pleasure of being sidelined with these guys for quite some time as we continue to learn and grow together. 
uh, these these numbers that I'm about to, to introduce my guys with are sponsored by uh, our director of operations and lady boss herself, Terry Mother said, we love and appreciate you. Uh, the invisible are the indispensable and we wouldn't be where we are without you. So love you and appreciate you, girl. Um, one of our co-hosts is the newest key leader in the Spiel Dinner Bay Shop. Let's throw out some stats for some street cred, right? Um, let's see here. This gentleman in particular uh, has net placed 80, over 89,000 in, in business in the last three months as a team. He has 71.4% growth over the last 90 days uh, from the first 90 days of last year uh, as a key leader. He finished July with 34 applications for just over $25,000 in production and is currently sitting at 100 and over 148,000 for the year on his own pen. Uh, so really excited to introduce you to Mr. Consistent. That's what we call him in the agency. And you can obviously see why by his stats. Uh, he's a proud husband and father and a true family man. Uh, he's turned this business into a family business by bringing in his wife, more recently his daughter, uh, and so happy to have key leader Alan Smith with us. Alan, can you unmute and introduce yourself to the crowd today? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Brandy. Very, very much appreciate the introduction and, and grateful for you and your friendship, your leadership in this business. Uh, my name is Alan Smith. I am direct to the one and only Mr. Jimmy Spildinner. And I am forever grateful for that. He has, the well, the time that he poured into me when it wasn't probably worth much to him to do that and just sticking with me and the leadership that he exemplifies every single day. And he's, he's become a really good friend of mine. I'm super, super grateful for Jimmy. Also, Brian and, and Edward, um, we have some of the best leaders in the whole industry and and i'm i'm super grateful for you guys brandon brian and casey thank you for for building a business that um that allows a guy who who comes from humble beginnings to to push his potential and and do something with his life so thank you guys for that um i know i before i i started here um i was a property casualty uh insurance agent in a call center um, doing home warranty products, um, you know, but I always, the company I was with, actually, they wanted to promote me into leadership with a 25% pay cut, you know, and, and I always felt underutilized anywhere I went. I, I, I did what they told me. I, I went to school, I got my degrees, you know, and, and still just never found, I was always looking for that opportunity. And this company allowed me to start part-time and I was able to, I was part-time for two years. I've been here for a little over four years now and I was able to grow into it. So um, very grateful, grateful for that. I'll kick it back to you, Brandy. Awesome. Where are you joining us from, Alan? What state are you in? Oh yeah, that's right. And that's okay. So I'm, I'm in the Chattanooga area, North Georgia, right? Awesome. Uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Awesome. Love it, love it. And you know, one thing I love about Alan is he may have been part-time, but he was never part committed, never. I mean, I've known the guy since he started and he's never been part committed. And I think that that's what really, really gave him the, uh, gave him what he needed to keep going and, and be there to create this legacy for his family. So love yeah. the partnership, Alan, thanks so much. Yeah. All right, so this next guy, this next guy, ex-baseball player. I love that we're a big baseball family, right? I hope that y'all got a chance to, I hope you got a chance to uh, talk with my son in Tennessee when we were just hanging out because he's with, he's big into it. So I saw you guys chatting. Um, that, that was awesome. Um, so this gentleman right here, um, I'd like to introduce you to uh, as an agency owner with Symmetry Financial Group. Uh, his master agency net placed 149, over 149,000 in the last three months. Um, Chris, uh, his PPL uh, is over the last 90 days is $536. If you don't know what that means, I would encourage you to refer to your new agent handbook and your mentor uh, so you can see how just amazing that number really is. Um, his agency has seen a 16.4% growth over the last 90 days uh, from the first 90 days of the year. Uh, and that's with, uh, you know, one of his key members of his team uh, being removed from the business during colon cancer. So Rick Dysinger, we love you, man. Um, prayers to you and to your family. And we look forward to having you back at it real soon. Um, in Chris, uh, in June, Chris 
wrote over 24,000 and issued over 24,000, right? I think he was like $600 off somewhere. Um, and he finished the month of July with 25 applications for 27,000. Uh, and he's the number one writing agent in the Spilled Under Master Agency year to date. So he's, and he's also sitting at 174,000 uh, for the year on his own pen. So I hope you guys have your own pens out because he's going to give us some things that show you how to do that. So Chris, uh, I just I love the partnership. Love having you here with us. Introduce yourself to the crowd today. Very good. Well, Brandy, thank you for the for the kind words uh, for you that don't know me. My name is Chris Ripple. Uh, I'm direct to Jimmy Spiel Dinner in the Spiel Dinner Delaney Pritchard hierarchy. Um, you know, I couldn't be more grateful for you know, the partnership with Jimmy, you know, as he's helped me go through, you know, the steps that, that he went through, right. And, and also just grateful, you know, to Brandon, Brian, Casey for implementing and developing this opportunity where, you know, we have a life of abundance. We we're, we we're allowed to have a life of, of get to rather than have to. And then finally, I'm real grateful for, uh, you know, all the cross line relationships, you know, Brandy, you know, you helped me get started in this business three years ago, August 11, 2018 was when I wrote my first <laughs> business, you know, talking with you after, you know, my meetings and, and, you know, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm missing some names, but guys like Ian Graham and, and, and Sterling Gatling out in the Grand Rapids office, being able to, uh, to, to leverage them, you know, as I, you know, got started on my own journey about three years ago. As I mentioned, I'm located here in West Michigan. I'm in Grand Haven, so over on the lakeshore, close to Grand Rapids. And, you know, been here about three years and, and real excited for, you know, not only where the company is going in the, in the future, but where, where my business is going. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And before, like, I know you, you played like some minor league ball, right? And you did, you, what, what were you doing when we found you, when we stumbled across you? Yeah, so prior to my time here at Symmetry, I played a little bit of baseball in college. I ended up coaching at the collegiate level. So my first career was was as a college baseball coach. So I did that for about three years. I was putting in the grind, recruiting, going out and, you know, never having any weekends. And I spent a year prior to my time here at Symmetry as a financial advisor. That's what got me licensed in the life and the health and, and securities. And, you know, it, it was it was a good experience for me. It just was it was just one where I didn't really have much success. And it wasn't due to a lack of of hard work, of time, of effort. I was putting in the 50, 60 hours a week making 400, 500 cold calls a week, going to networking events, building relationships on a long, because a much longer uh, sales process. And the wallet run dry, <laughs> the wallet run dry. I, I wasn't making much, if any, and and a former, co and I was on my way out of the industry. I was going to just go get a regular job. And thank goodness, a former colleague of mine, you know, he, who I knew just, you know, let me know about symmetry, that there was an opportunity out this because I didn't know that existed where there were families that were, you know, looking for coverage. And I had the opportunity as a broker to help them in the best way possible. But what I found and, you know, from plugging into the calls over the years is that it's, it, and it's true is a lot of times what bring people here is going to be the leads and the system, but what keeps us here is the leadership and the culture. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That guy's not here anymore, huh? He's not. He's not. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? All right, you guys. Well, with that, thanks so much, you guys. Um, appreciate your partnership on this. We're going to get into some training, some nuts and bolts, some things that you can take with you today, lots of things that you can take with you today um, from all of us uh, to be able to implement today. <laughs> Not next week, today. Mm -hmm. Don't think about it a lot. Don't make a plan. Don't do all that stuff. Just do these things. Um, and leverage this amazing system like we have, um, and you too will have some of you know these crazy numbers. So the title of our call today is Bring Your A Game. So that's what we're gonna talk about, making sure to have your pen and paper ready. You can grab these nuggets so that you can get into action. So a couple of the takeaways uh, today are gonna be asking for the business, right? That's the first A. We're gonna be assumptive all the way through our meetings even before, right, when we're booking the appointment, asking for the business a minimum of three times throughout the presentation and, and the conversation around that. So asking for the business is gonna be important. We're taking them down a path, right? We're not kidnapping them uh, into an application. Uh, and then we're gonna be addressing the elephants in the room. Uh, what we wanna do is 
have you focused on the uncomfortable parts of the sales system, right? There are some times where it's just uncomfortable to ask certain things, uh, but we want you to focus on those uh, uncomfortable parts of the sales system so that you can get good at those uncomfortable parts of the scripted side of it so that when it comes to the uncomfortable parts that aren't scripted, you've got that posture ready and ready to go, right? So there's no hesitation. Um, and then we're also gonna talk about application questions, leveraging those application questions in your in-home risk assessment to increase urgency for the clients to be applying today, uh, making sure that you're asking the right questions at the right time, which will help avoid last minute surprises and it will help you speed up the application process. So with that, Let's get into the nitty gritty here. Uh, we're going to start off with agency owner, Chris Ripple. Take it away, buddy. Very good. Thank you, Brandy. Um, I'm going to start out with the first A, which is going to be the assumption, assuming the sale. You know, how can I expect to, to help this family if I do not assume I'm there to help the family and I'm asking for the business, right? And, and you know, I started to think about this topic and I really think that those, the assumption is going to come from three different things. Number one is going to be from the belief. You know, we got to sell ourselves first on, you know, not only that, that it's important to protect the families, you know, if they were to pass away that, because we all know the stats when it comes to a death or a disability to one of the homeowners, what that looks like, but, but we also have to have the belief that we're the person to be their person, right? We're the person that's going to understand their situation and provide them with the top option that not only fits their needs, but fits their budget and is that perfect fit for that family. So having the belief in, you know, I'm here to do a job, I'm here to protect that family on the requests that you had made. You know, one of the things that helped in my belief in my, you know, three coming up on three years here and, you know, four years in the business is when that time comes when you, unfortunately you're on the other side of, of the sales process where you had went out and protected that family and, you know, unfortunately, you know, one of those family members passes away. And, you know, at least for me, when I had my first one, it, it started to change my mindset of, you know, rather than going out and trying to, you know, write as much business as possible to then get as much deposits as possible to then rinse and repeat to, you know, no, these are people, they're leads, but they're people that have made a request and, and they're important. And, and it's my job to, to help them get out of their own way in a sense, sometimes to be able to, to get them to that end goal of protecting their family. Number two is having an abundance, um, not never needing anything, right? One of the things that Brian Delaney uh, always said to us, or, you know, I've heard him say to us in our, in our group uh, coaching is that, and this is whether on the building side or on the production side, is that I'm not trying to get more out of anyone. And if that's the case, and that means I need more people, right? And, and the takeaway I take from that, especially on the producing side, is that if I'm sitting down with enough families, whether that's 15 to 20 families a week or whatever our numbers show from those law of large numbers, we need to make sure we're sitting with that amount of families so that when we're there, we're not needy, right? We're there for them and not for us. We're, we're there for, for their protection and not our wallets. Um, and then finally is gonna be the confidence. And where the confidence is gonna come from is from, from doing the business, right? From, from doing the work, from the massive action, but also the constant correction from putting in the time, putting in the work, because when you're, when you put in the work and you're prepared, that's where confidence comes from. And that's something I've seen from, you know, not only Crossline from other agents that are, you know, writing about very consistently writing business, but I look at my agency, guys like Zach Hutchinson, Rick Deisinger, who, as you, uh, who you mentioned, Ian Mikowski, guys that on a regular basis, they're going out, they're putting in the, the activity. And that's why they have the confidence when they sit with the family, because they know that, you know, if that family's not there or that family decides it's not important or an agent already showed up at that family, there's more families to help, right? We have an abundance mindset, not a, not a you know, fixed mindset. So how do we assume the sale? The client needs to know when we're there that we're there to do an application, right? We need to be, when it's done correctly, we're, we're bringing them down a road, right? So at least in my experience and when I talk about with my agents, there's never really a one part where you're asking for the business. You know, as Brandy said, this is something that we're including into our scripting with our strong posture of, you know, we're expecting to do the business and especially in the role and purpose, uh, letting them know that, you know, we're there to, you know, figure out what it is that they'll qualify for. And when we find the one that best fits their needs and best fits their budget, then we'll be able to help them apply and see if they qualify for the coverage. 
And with that being said, that's what the process is. Because at the end of the day, I, the client, whoever, we don't get to make the decision on whether or not they qualify for that coverage. It's the insurance company's job, whether or not they're going to qualify for it. And then once we know that, then we're able to, you know, give them the best fit. So my, my challenge to, to, to Symmetry Nation, you know, as we embark on this first week of August and, and you know, here on Monday is, is this upcoming week, get a little bit uncomfortable you know, if that's something that you, you know, asking for the, for the business, you know, letting them know what your purpose is for, for being there. You know, your job is to sit down with them, understand their situation, and then show them what they're going to qualify for and when, and then you're going to do an application, right? So uh, lastly, I want to, before I, I, I pass this on to Alan Smith, as he go, goes over addressing the elephants in the room, I just want to once again edify Alan. You know, this is somebody that is worth taking notes for. You know, last month he wrote over 34 applications, over 25,000 of production. And I was with him for a week during that time down in Tennessee. So this is somebody that, you know, Randy's exactly right. He's as consistent as they come. So, you know, I know I'll be, be listening in closely. Alan. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, killed it. Excellent. You're a, a hard act to follow. That's for sure. And uh, I'll edify Christopher right back. He's a, uh, or Chris right back. He's, you know, have a PPL over 500 guys. That's, that's profitability. Plus this guy is, I mean, he's issuing almost everything that he writes. So he's, he's an amazing leader in our, in our agency and appreciate your leadership. So Addressing the elephant in the room, and I'll, I'll try to be quick here. So what, what we're talking about are the uncomfortable moments in the sales system. So nothing, nothing grows in our comfort zones, as they say. So we have to be willing to step outside our comfort zones because those are the moments that move us forward. Um, something that my mentor uh, told me um, along the way is that I need to stop being a little wimp. <laughs> and so there are four places in the sales system that can be a little uncomfortable, especially for new people. It starts on the phone with the intro, getting through the intro. Uh, it's a little uncomfortable. Booking the appointment is also can be a little uncomfortable. But those are also the two places in the phone script that, that move us forward to progress. Then once we get in the home, it is in the role and purpose, letting them know that the application is going to be taken today. Today's the application process. Um, and then again, with the think about it. And if you guys don't know exactly what I'm talking about there, definitely ask your mentor about those, those things. So we're talking about uh, the intro, the book and the appointment, um, the application today, and the think about it. And the good thing about knowing where these uncomfortable moments in the cell system is, is that we can actually get good at them. We can practice them. And so what happens is if you can, if you can get a really good posture around the uncomfortable moments that are scripted, then it allows us to be more prepared for the moments in that come up unscripted. And I'll give you a, a couple of examples that's happened within the last year. I was at, um, I was in a home, uh, still doing some in-home stuff with a family. Step number one, took them to the kitchen table, building rapport. The guy would, would not sit down. He was cooking something in the kitchen, kind of bouncing around a little bit. His wife was at the kitchen table, but she she wouldn't sit down either. She was leaning over with her elbows on the table. So I just stayed on step one, just continued talking to them and, and just kind of getting to know them until it actually started getting a little weird. Like, you know, what's this guy doing? So finally, the wife says, um, OK, so what you got? And I'm and so I, I rebuttaled with that or retorted. Um, well, are we going to sit down and have a serious conversation about this? So she yelled at her husband and said, you know, come on, get in, get in here. So he cut the stove off, uh, came over, sat down, everybody sat down. 
And he immediately apologized and opened up about how he does not like insurance and he doesn't think that he should have to get insurance. And he started talking about homeowners and auto insurance. And I told him, well, you know, the good thing about life policies is they're optional with auto and homeowners. You kind of have to get that stuff. They make us buy it. But with life, you can take it or leave it. And so because of that, the insurance companies have got a little more creative in their product offering. Did you know that there are policies that will give you all your money back in the end if you don't use them? And there's even policies that will make money for you if you, you know, if, if you wanted to do something like that. So I ended up writing a Forrester's Smart UL for full mortgage payoff for that family. And he loved it, loved it. But I really feel like if, if I had just continued uh, with my presentation without taking control in the home, I don't think that um, I would have been able to get that family protected. And there's other little things too, like, um, you know, having them to cut the TV off you know, that's, that's gonna, I'm not going to be able to focus um, with my ADD if that's on. If you're on a virtual appointment, making sure that both are the husband and the wife are sitting down in front of the camera with their medications and ready to go. And they're not bouncing around kind of like my guy was. And so basically with, with this, um, my challenge for you guys is to get good at the parts that we already know are going to come up that are going to be a little uncomfortable. Like I brought my wife in, Arlette Salazar, from the very beginning. She's calling old leads of mine, you know, going out, writing business. She has the belief already. She doesn't have to fabricate that, but she lets them know in every home today is the application process took me forever to do that <laughs> forever she does it right away christopher engel another guy on my team that's up and coming um struggling uh for a while and finally he decided that he's gonna actually stick to this the system and the presentation and learn it and do it the way that it's supposed to be done and all of a sudden boom what do you know he's having success super excited to see him come up um you'll be seeing him soon on the leaderboards so my challenge the intro of the phone script the booking the appointment the um setting or the application will be taken today and the rolling or the think about it okay put those on index cards memorize them say them out loud record yourself even get good at it with strong strong posture and i'm gonna pass this over to Miss Brandy Kimbrell now. Um, Brandy has been instrumental in, in my success here. She's been with me since day one. She was with me when I wrote my first app, helping me put it in the system, told me you can do it once, you can do it twice. Um, her agency has net placed 164,000 over the past three months. She had 92 applications for $107,512 for July. 28% growth from June to July, 580,974 dollars in production for her so far this year. Uh, Brandy, thank you for for everything you do for us. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Alan. And and I, man, you guys, you said it was hard to follow Chris. I have to follow both of you. Who set up this rotation? I'm not quite sure. Next time, I'm going first. Um, Super awesome stuff, you guys. I hope I can wrap this up with as much value as they've been able to contribute today. Um, and big shout out to my agency because those are not my numbers. Those are our numbers, right? Um, it takes a team to do that. So really appreciate everyone and all the growing that we've been doing um, and, and leveraging this amazing system. So we're gonna wrap this up, stick with us. I promise these last couple minutes are gonna be really worth your while. Um, I wanna talk to you all today about how to leverage actual product applications, right? One of the titles that a lot of us use as we connect with families is a field underwriter, right? Senior underwriter, field underwriter, that's what we do. 
Uh, we've got products that ask all different kinds of questions and have all different kinds of qualifications to get approved for that particular product. Back in the day, before the creation of the amazing virtual mentor, and shout out to Matt and Brad Smith, uh, the brainchild um, for that amazing system, uh, we had to rely on application questions, agent guides, and that way we can find the right program for our clients. Now, obviously, we still rely on those things, but why not leverage them at maximum capacity, right? Uh, I had a stack of term applications on my desk. Uh, and I had a stack of whole life applications on my desk five and a half years ago when I started. Not for every company, guys. Don't go to all 50 companies and print the apps. Just your core carriers, right? Our core four. Um, have those out and at your fingertips. Uh, if I needed cl uh, clarity after looking at the application, I hit the agent guide. If I needed more clarity, I called for a risk assessment. Then I got with my mentor, right? I'm going to do 10 minutes worth of work before I take up a minute of his. So I did the work and then I got with him so he could help, you know, move me around a little bit, right? Make those adjustments that we needed because he had so much expertise in this area. So I follow this process with my team uh, to this day uh, with the addition of virtual mentor and that helps weed out, right? Most of what they won't qualify for. It's not an end all say all, um, but let's take it a step further, you guys. What is the point of getting our clients excited about a plan, applying for a plan, and then not doing everything in our power to make sure they get approved, right? We've all been there. We've all been there. We don't wanna get someone declined for coverage because we didn't ask the right questions. So part of our client meetings is going back over the health that we got over the phone, right? Getting a detailed view of their overall health, lifestyle, uh, that way we can choose the proper path for them to get qualified without sending a nurse out to their home, uh, drawing blood, taking a urine sample, putting them into a corner where only 30% of people get what they applied for. Uh, that's not what we're about, right? We ask about their medications. We ask what they're being treated for, dosage, frequency. Then we get into hospitalization history, DUI, excessive traffic violations. Are you on parole? Uh, then, you know, those extracurriculars that are maybe on the wild side, scuba diving, skydiving, my personal favorite rodeo events. Um, I always get a giggle out of that one for them and for me. Uh, so I would encourage you, as you are in this particular part of your appointment, you have your application at the ready. If you've pre-gamed your appointment, which hopefully you have, uh, you know which company you want to be plan A, and you know which company you want to be plan B, and you know whether you're going term, whole life, what have you. So have that application ready. Once you get your questions asked, let's ask the detailed questions the carrier wants to know, right? Try this on for size, right? You're in your meeting. Once you get that assessment done, you turn to the questions on the application and you say, okay, Joe, Barbara, uh, it sounds like you may be a good fit for the plan I have worked up for you. I'm gonna ask you the questions that I'm legally obligated to ask you to see if we should proceed with this particular plan. So I'm gonna read through these questions as quickly and clearly as I can. And what I need from you is just a clear yes or no for each of these questions. Sound good? And then you just go into it. So go into the specific questions. Um, when I was first starting out, um, I was new to underwriting and understanding what limitations carriers had. So the more that you read these applications, the more you're going to get to know them. And there are many things that can happen regarding someone's health that can stand them in the, in the way of them getting approved, right? Who sits around and thinks, okay, I'm going to go to the doctor and get diagnosed with cancer. I'm going to have a blockage and need something happening. Uh, I could get diagnosed as a diabetic. What is scleroderma? Right? There's stuff on there that nobody's even heard of before. Everyone we sit with could be one doctor's appointment away from not qualifying for what they can qualify for today. Right? It's our job to make sure they don't procrastinate on this anymore. Their family is too important for that. And they're too important to us. Right? This will create the sense of urgency that we need to protect the family today. Um, I used to get frustrated um, when I was first learning uh, these things because they didn't tell me. They weren't telling me what I needed to know to do my job, okay? Uh, Jimmy very quickly um, turned me around, turned my mindset around on that, and he said, Brandy, don't get better, get better, okay? They're, it's not their job to tell you what you need to know. It's your job to ask the right questions. So why not just you know eliminate any ambiguity there and just ask the questions that the carriers want to know? Right. Um, the other thing that this is going to do is it's going to give you an opportunity to 
make a pivot if you need to in the beginning of the application instead of at the end. We've all been in the application process and come across a question and something was left out. Now we have to turn all the way back around and we've got to start over almost, right? So you can avoid a lot of those issues as well. Uh, and it's going to speed up the end of your appointment, right? We've already talked on the phone with them. We've dug into the why. We've had a really great conversation. We picked a plan that we think is the right fit for them but then it feels like the application process takes so long. What if you can eliminate having to ask those health questions and be really confident that what you're doing is actually gonna get the family covered and actually gonna get you paid, right? So just a couple of things that I hope you can take away with you um, to help. So in the theme of challenge, right? Here at Symmetry, we like to have the right balance of support and challenge. I hope that this call has been supportive for you and now it's time to continue bringing challenge as the two gentlemen before me have done so. So the challenge is going to be for you is to take all of this and do it. Don't overanalyze it, don't think about it, don't get paralysis by analysis, just do it. Chris talked about being assumptive all the way through and asking for the business a minimum, right, of three times throughout the presentation right? In your role and purpose, take them down that path. Don't kidnap them. Take them down a path. We talked about addressing the elephants in the room with Alan Smith, taking those uncomfortable parts of the sales system that we can identify, getting good at those so it gives us the posture that we need to be a little bit more bold, right? And have that symbol full of boldness that Casey talks about to handle the unscripted parts of the presentation that may be a little uncomfortable, right? And then I shared with you guys about how to leverage the application questions in your risk assessment, right? Increase your urgency for the clients to apply today. Make sure that you're asking the right questions at the right time. Avoid last minute surprises and speed up that process. So I challenge you to bring your A game this week. We're all heading into altitude conferences. Have that cash flow go. Bring your A game by following these tips that we gave you today and tell your mentor about it. Text them, call them, tell them what's going on. Tell them that you implemented things from the call today and what kind of difference they're making in your business. And if you know you got a little uncomfortable and backed off on one of them, do it in the next one, right? There's always a next one. So you guys, I hope this was helpful. This is such an amazing opportunity and thank you to uh, invite us as an agency to be able to add value back into you guys today. Um, we love all of you. We're a, one big happy family and we absolutely love it. If you're new, uh, welcome to the family. You're in the right place, right time. Thanks so much, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your day.